take your faith. So at this point, we've identified and indexed all of the parts. Remember, our goal is to be able to assemble the seal uh, together exactly the way it was received. Uh, we've, we've done all that. Um, uh, by now, you, you, what you might want to do is, is fully clean all the parts so that you can measure and inspect them if you want to take IDs, ODs, length measurements, um, that sort of thing you can. Um, so by now, you've actually recorded a whole lot of data, uh, and that, that's, that's really the point. Now you can begin to really start thinking about, okay, how did this seal fail? You can move from data capture into real failure analysis. Um, uh, that being said, you know, if you have things in Ziploc bags, you want to get them closed up so they're not out gassing, drying out, what have you. Uh, if it's, just, say, over the weekend or even for a week or more. Um, same thing with the O-rings. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll move them from uh, this kind of tagging into Ziploc bags because now I've, I've pretty much done all the observations I'm going to do uh, on the O-ring. Well, that concludes basic practices on seal teardown and inspection. Uh, I encourage you to use all of these and even develop your own um, uh, philosophy for doing this. Um, again, the point is to record observation so that you can make a lot of really good conclusions later. Uh, and, and, and also, once, you, once you've mastered a lot of these best practices, when you train your customer on how to inspect seals and troubleshoot seals, you can take them through these protocols it, it, it's probably not something that they've seen before, uh, but again, what the ideal is to have a much more disciplined and, and habit-based approach to doing this so that, uh, number one, you're safe, other people are safe, and you preserve as much evidence as possible. Thank you.